Yes, for my son. I got him my boy. Here, get on foot up here. Your son, Tony, this fellow with an O. Huh? S-O-N. Oh, oh, Tony. Is that right? I got everything all ready, Dr. Davis. Thank you, please. Marie, my wife, she's in the visitor room here. She got her sister with her, too. Please, doctor, hurry up, huh? Right. I stay right here waiting for the good news. Huh? <laughs> What's the matter? Business all the finish, please. Out the side, huh? Tomorrow, everybody come and drink the free wine and for my new baby, huh? Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. What's the matter? Doctor, don't you go to tell me she's a boy? She's a boy, no? The Tony's boy. Marie, my Maria, she's okay. He's all right. Well, uh, the bambino is all right, my Maria is all right, but the... Uh, your face isn't all right. What's the matter? Tony, your son was born dead. What's that? Well, I've got a pretty good idea, Tony. I have to ask you a few questions first. Questions? What questions? Well, not now, Tony. I better wait till your wife gets No, home. please, and now you've got to be crazy. What's happening? All right. Did anyone ever tell you, Tony, that you've got syphilis? Sir, Sim what are you talking about? I never got it. It's just stop it. Easy, think. I want you to think back carefully. Do you remember ever having a sore that didn't heal very fast? No, no. No, I never... Yes, about a, two years ago. That's uh, before I was married. I got a little sore, but but I buy some salve. I put them on, and she gets all well, cured. Might make the sore go away, but no medicine you could buy ever cured sir. I got syphilis. I'm almost sure syphilis killed your baby, Tony. You see, a syphilitic sore will go away without any treatment in time, but the germs stay in your body. You mean I yes, did. Tony. I'm afraid that you gave Maria syphilis and she gave it to the baby. Tony! I kill my bambino. I, I break my Maria's heart. I don't want to live no more. Tony, you've got to get hold of yourself. What's the good of you in the morning of a bambino? You're wrong, Tony. With proper medical treatment, you can both be cured. Then you can have all the bambinos you want. You mean if me and my Maria we go to the hospital, we can have another bambino? Is it going to live? Sure you can. <laughs> if you have the proper medical treatment. I want you to promise me you're going to come to the hospital. Please, Doctor. Excuse the tears, right? The heart is so full up, he's got to run over a little bit. But is it true that we can have another son who's going to be all right? Believe me, Tony, it is. All right. We take any kind of a treatment with the doctor. Adam. I've got to go in the other room and see your wife again. I can go with you. No, Tony. But I'll let you know when you can come in. Please, Doc. Don't be too long, huh? Okay, Tony.
Well, goodbye, Tony. Now, remember, you and your wife must come here every week. You mustn't miss a single treatment. And don't you worry, Doctor. Me and my Maria would come here every week, you bet you my life. Thank you, Mr. Doctor, for coming to see me so many times. Matron and me are very glad we have such a good friend who tell us what to do. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Madroni. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tony. Goodbye, Doctor. And uh, thank you too much. Be sure you come every week. Come in, young man. Oh, Dr. Perkins. Yes? I want to thank you for taking an interest in Tony Madroni and his wife. Oh, don't thank me. The more patients, the better I like it, Dr. Uh... Morton, I was the intern on the Madroni case. Oh, yes, Dr. Morton. I'm very glad to meet you. Won't thank you come in? Have a chair. Thank you. I won't be long. <clears throat> well, young man, what seems to be your trouble? That's all right. This is Dr. Morton. Well, sure. Some time ago, I picked up a girl in a dance hall. Well, about three weeks later, I noticed a little sore here on my mouth. Didn't pay much attention to it. I thought it was just a cold sore, but the darn thing hung on so long, I got kind of worried about it. I happened to pick up one of these public health service folders and got to reading about syphilis, and I got scared. Hmm. Did the folder explain everything all right? Yes, sir. It said in there that even though a sore might heal up just like mine did, if you've got syphilis, your germs might still be in your body. I found out all the things that could happen to you if you didn't get to it right away. I figured I'd better come down here and find out about it. Good boy. Miss Jones, I want to take a blood test on this man. Yes, doctor. All right, take off your coat and roll up your sleeve, please. Now, this blood test will show whether you had a cold sore or whether you've got syphilis. Now, if this makes you nervous, you can turn your head. Make a tight fist, please. You gonna hurt much, Doc? No, no. Just a little pinprick. As soon as we've finished this, you can go into the other room and Dr. Howard will give you a complete physical examination. Pretty lucky to have picked up this folder. Well, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Yes, he was lucky to have picked up that folder. But there are hundreds of thousands of men and women in this country suffering from syphilis who won't pick up a folder. It's a pretty sad state of affairs when we have to depend on luck to whip this syphilis problem. If they could see the truth behind newspaper articles reporting nervous breakdowns, suicides, and deaths from heart failure, they'd find a shocking percentage could be chalked up to late syphilis. Now, I was called as a, as a consultant in this case. Stanton didn't have a nervous breakdown. He had paralysis. Probably contracted syphilis 15 or 20 years ago. The outward symptoms disappeared and he thought he was cured. And syphilis began to soften his brain, his business judgment went bad, but by the time he went to pieces, it was too late to save either the public's money or Stanton. And yet he could have been cured if he'd received medical care in time. Surely. If Stanton had had a blood test and proper treatment years ago, we could have prevented that tragedy. Now, here's another problem we run into. Here's a man who began his treatments ten years ago and took them for a few weeks until the sore cleared up, and he thought he was cured. We couldn't get him back again for the rest of the treatments. It took syphilis ten years to get him. But two months ago, he had a heart attack while he was driving his car. He crashed into a schoolyard and killed three children. Syphilis killed them all. Yes, but those men didn't know as much about syphilis as young fellows do today. <laughs> well, Morton, I'd like to agree with you, but I can't. Now, here's a typical case. Jerry Anderson. Jerry Anderson, college athlete, good student, intelligent. Son of respectable family. Jerry's story began the afternoon of the last football game of the season. He and his teammates had won the game and decided to go out for a little celebration that evening. Remember me? Sure do, buddy. The six of us. More the merrier. Ladies in the parlor. Good morning, fellas. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Peg is waiting for me. Thanks. So, Jerry had.
had his celebration. And only three weeks later, he was sitting just where you are. What's your name? Jerry Anderson. Jerry Anderson. How did you happen to come into the clinic? Well, I couldn't afford to go to a private doctor. I didn't know what to do. Called the county health department to see if they couldn't do something for me. Told to come and see you. Hmm. What's your trouble, Jerry? Well, I've, I've got a pretty bad sore down here. Mm -hmm. Just stretch out on the table over there. We'll have a look at you. Come over here. I want you to see this little corkscrew devil that's causing all your trouble. Look. This dark field test shows up the spirochetes. Can you see them wriggling back and forth across the slide? Yes. What did you call them? Spirochetes. Those are the germs that cause your syphilis. You had to learn the hard way that you can't tell by the looks of a woman whether she has syphilis or not. I guess that finishes me. I'll have to leave home, quit school, and go someplace where people don't know who I am. Now, Jerry, you know you can't meet any problem by running away from it. You may not realize it, but you're a very lucky young man because we're catching this in time to cure you. Miss Jones, prepare a four-tenths Neo injection. Yes, but, Doctor, I can't take a chance on the folks or the kids at school finding out I've got syphilis. Now, don't worry about having syphilis. Luckily, after the first few injections, the sore will disappear and you won't be able to infect anybody. You can go about your class work, play basketball, tennis, or indulge in any other sport. Sit down here, please, and roll up your sleeve. And nobody need ever know that you have syphilis. But you'll have to report every week and not place a single treatment for at least one year. That's your relief. I feel like living again. Gee, Doctor, that, that didn't hurt a bit. I always heard that shots for syphilis were painful. Not if you go to a doctor who knows his business. I don't know how to thank you, Doctor. Just come into my office and give me the name of the guy who infected you. That's all the thanks I want. Come on. Doctor, I kind of hate to do that. I'm no stool pigeon. Sit down here, please. Now, Jerry, a lot of men have a false sense of chivalry about giving the name of the woman who infected them. We're not going to do anything harmful to the girl, and your name won't be brought into it. We only want to bring her in for examination and treatment. If we can treat and cure you and the woman responsible for your infection, we're breaking another link in the evil chain of syphilis that stretches every case of the disease. Now look here. We've found that one case of syphilis usually results in three more. Each of the three results in another three. So you can see, Jerry, that every time we treat and cure this disease, we're preventing the spread of syphilis to many hundreds of people. So you're doing your job by coming to me for treatment, and I'll do mine by curing you. I'm beginning to see what we're up against. The same old mistakes over and over again. What are we going to do to put young men wise? I can show you one of the answers to that question if you have a little time to spare. Yeah, I'm right with you, Doctor. Oh, the courthouse. What are we doing here? Well, the county health officers sometimes hold their meetings here. Other times in schoolhouses, large buildings, or wherever we can find the space and, and get an audience. Today they're running a new film for a group of young men to show them how to protect themselves from contracting venereal diseases. Those are the facts about syphilis and its dangers. But why let syphilis get started? You can't have syphilis or gonorrhea unless you expose yourself to the germ. If you're smart, you keep away from prostitutes and pickups. Most of them have syphilis or gonorrhea. They're not safe, and they can't be made safe. As you leave the room, there will be someone waiting at the door to pass out folders containing further information about venereal diseases. They will answer almost any question that comes to your mind about syphilis or gonorrhea. You'll find that those folders give simple, straightforward facts with no punches pulled. What do they mean by sucker? 
Anybody that believes a druggist or a quack doctor ever cured a case of syphilis. And there are hundreds of thousands of them in this country. Why, disreputable druggists and quack doctors rob the poor devils of millions every year. Just the other day, I heard of a tragic case. I can see you're walking much better since that last medicine I gave you. Sit down. Sit right down. No, Doctor. Not much better. My legs seem to be getting worse every day. But yours is a very stubborn case, Mr. Spencer. Very stubborn indeed. But you must remember that every rocky road in life has a turning. I have just perfected a new remedy for locomotor attacks here. It's taken me years of research. But, Doctor, you've been prescribing new medicines for me for a long time. I've paid you over $2,000. Mr. Spencer, I'd sooner cut off my right arm, up to there, than take another dollar from you if you've lost faith in my ability or my integrity. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I don't mind putting out the money if I, if I could only get better. But losing faith in me isn't going to make you feel any better, is it now? Well, maybe since you put so much time on the new medicine, I ought to give it a fair trial. Are you really sure it will help me? Why, of course I'm sure. This medicine, I absolutely guarantee. Paxton's Panacea. Three bottles of this scientific discovery of mine at $5 a bottle will eliminate every last evil germ of syphilis from your body. Now, just follow the directions. Each bottle will last you three days. And on the ninth day, all your pains will have vanished, and all of your troubles will be over. Of course, the coroner said suicide. Yes, but that quack with his worthless drugs really murdered the old man. Morton is no excuse for that. We've got the weapons to wipe out this disease. To use them, doctors must have the help of everyone who has been exposed to syphilis. Syphilis kills babies. It strikes back with blindness and insanity. A licensed physician with modern methods can cure syphilis. No quack doctor or medicine you buy can do the job. Don't be a sucker. Stick to medical treatment and you can be cured. Prostitutes and pickups aren't safe and cannot be made safe. It doesn't pay to take a chance. Watch for the warning signals. Any sore or rash that does not heal quickly means go to a licensed medical doctor or call your city or county health office at once. If you think you've been exposed at any time, get a blood test and a physical examination now. Know for sure. <laughs> 